So hey there gang, Patrick King here, and I'm here with my good friend Jack Ballou, and we're actually in Portugal right now at, I'm not quite sure what time it is, this is still set for the US, but I think it's coming in close on 10.30 p.m. We just finished up uh, what is my second riding tour, my second group here in Portugal at Valença Classical Riding, just outside of Lisbon, Portugal in Vila Francachira. And Jack joined me for this group and I'm so excited that you did. So That's amazing. Thank you for coming along. Amazing. And I really twisted her arm and talked her into joining me for this video. If you've watched many of my podcasts, you know that most of the time we're on the phone talking to each other or we're on a Zoom call working with computer glitches. And so I was super excited that we're in the same place at the same time, right? Yeah, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> But we're in the same place at the same time and we can actually sit down and have the conversation together. So uh, to me, I, I don't know, I feel like it's going to be even better for that. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, no pressure. But we want to talk to you today about the warm up. And if you're listening to this because you're part of the uh, online academy for classical horsemanship, uh, you know that this month's session, anyway, January 2023, is focused on the warm up. So I'm really excited to have Jack here with me to talk about this because I, maybe you should describe yourself, but I would refer to Jack as like a specialist in equine physiology. Uh, is that how you? Yeah, mean? that's where my passion is for sure. Like okay. I've authored a few books and I've studied relentlessly. I've taken some courses through the University of Guelph in Canada on equine exercise physiology. So it's definitely my passion for sure. And an area that uh, always surprises me that there's not more being done. But that said, equine studies are very hard to fund and pull off on a large scale. So we don't mm. have a lot of scientific basis to physiology and exercise. So it's something I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to keep raising the bar and shining more light on this area. So, That's you. awesome. Cool. And so many of you have heard me <clears throat> refer to Jack's books and heard me refer to exercises that she's given and say, I learned this from Jack and I learned this other thing and, and, but go to her books because she's way smarter about this stuff than I am. So the idea, the whole collaboration, and we were just talking about that at dinner, that the whole idea of collaboration in the industry, I think is so important being able to tie in the collective knowledge. That's so important. So all that is, is great, is super important, but let's talk about the warm up. So yeah. what I'm kind of thinking here is across the board, which I know is a total vague question, but when you're thinking about the warm up, what would you think about? Okay. I think about the warm up a lot. There's very vague ways people go about their warm up because we've all been told you should move the horse around a little bit before you do your proper work. But the thing is that loosening up is different than warming up. The purpose of warming up is to bring the muscles to a specific temperature so that they're pliable, but also so that they are oxygenated and the blood is actively pushed into the muscle. Like that's the point of warming up. But you can't do that when you first bring them out because you need to circulate the joint fluids. There's no mm. way around that. There's just no way around that. So now we're talking snowmobile fluid. The snowmobile right? fluid. Okay. Yeah. So all the studies I've read, and there are several of them, all show that between 10 and 12 minutes is of, of rhythmic walking is what it takes. Oh wow. And like the lower end number would be for like a younger horse, you know, it's a little bit physiology dependent, but there's no way that it only takes four minutes, right? Okay. And people will always ask, well, what if my horse lives in a pasture? Well, unless your horse is out there doing rhythmic, continuous movement, that doesn't count. And, and I hate to so say- So if he's pacing at the gate, that's a good start? <laughs> if it's rhythmic, if it's rhythmic, right? Not if it's erratic. <laughs> okay. That is good. Okay. Yeah. Just kidding, don't, <laughs> sorry. And the thing is, if you don't, if you don't, so what happens with the snowmobile fluid when it warms up, it thins out. So it is very thick to protect the joint. And when mm -hmm. we bring up the temperature, we start moving around, it thins out and that's what lubricates the joint. If you don't do that, what happens is the subchondral bone and the cartilage takes all the concussion and that's where you get early arthritis. And I believe that's why you see arthritis in a lot of the disciplines that start horses really young and work them really hard. I don't wanna, mm -hmm. I don't wanna throw shade on any discipline specifically, but mm -hmm. If you don't give that 10 to 12 minutes of just walking, you're doing your horse a huge disservice, but that's not warming up. You gotta do that phase, but that's not that's warming up. up. That's just loosening up. Can part of that be done with in hand work? Yeah, totally. Okay, it so can, so when we talk about the loosen up, and, and if I'm understanding it correctly, there's the loosen up and then there's the warm up. 
right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as part of the loosen up, and this is why I love that we can share this because I get to learn alongside you guys here. Um, so part of that loosening up, we can be doing that with in-hand work. We can be doing that with our even basic groundwork if our horse isn't yet educated into the in-hand work, mm -hmm. so long as we're talking about rhythmic motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So what would that, I'm sorry for like interjecting in here with this, no, but what great. would that rhythmic motion look like? Like, I want to I wanna say, I'm pretty sure we're not talking about, like I've heard it referred to as just jip him around a few circles and, and we get the hard roll back turns and yeah. that sort of thing. Like that's not what we're talking about. No, ideally it's just, you're just walking around. So you're not doing sharp turns. You're not doing like a lot of um, activities that make the, the hoof rotate in the sand. So you're not doing a lot of steep leg yields and things like that. So with your work in hand, okay. it would be more like gentle, more gradual. Um, ideally some, the horse is focused on you. So in your walk, if the horse is just lethargically plodding about you might do some speed changes in the walk for example but it's not the time unless you really lose the horse's focus and you need to just get them back on you it's not the time to like interject a brisk trot for example so it's okay. just it's just cruising around walking and if you're the type of person that gets super bored doing that and some days I do I will work them in hand for that reason like I know that I'm gonna be okay. more purposeful from the ground I'm gonna give them the gotcha. 10 minutes that I need from the ground yep and that's a good way to go about it now when we talk about the 10 minutes, are you setting a timer for 10 minutes? Are you listening to three tracks on Spotify? So, are you like, how do you That's so funny because I, I often do use my watch just to check myself because I find like as, I don't know, I find as human sometimes, and especially when you've done something a lot of years, you mm -hmm. lose track of time. You can totally. be like, yeah, that was 10 minutes. And I'll, I'll use my watch <laughs> oh, and I'll be three. like, oh, that was three. Yeah. And I know that there's different sides of this. Like I know Master Oliveira was like, you don't ride by time. You don't ride by your watch. He was like, you mm -hmm. ride by feel and for your horse. Absolutely, totally. Mm -hmm. But if you don't check yourself sometimes, <laughs> I find that we're not, we're not, again, just doing service by the horse. So sometimes I will use a watch. And what's fun is like, I watched some of your, um, your videos on the Academy for Work in Hand and I sort of went through a sequence and I timed myself last week. Went through mm. position one, position two, the raid, did that, ba, 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 and it was about eight minutes. Okay. And so if you factor in the time it takes you to like walk your horse from the cross tie area, wherever you prepare them to your arena and then start doing some work in hand, I find that that's usually about 10 minutes. So. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know. It's just a side note. So yeah. Keep in mind. That's super cool. That, uh, I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. So, but we're not saying the loosen up has to happen on the ground, right? Right. You could right, be mounted right. and doing the loosen totally, up. Totally, absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes. Because one of my favorite things to do at home is we've got uh, we've got several paddocks. Uh, we've got about 50 acres of paddocks. I think there's 18 paddocks total. They're all cross fenced. We can ride between alleyways and different things like yeah. that. Yeah. One of my favorite ways of I think of it as part of the loosen up to the warm up. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to hear you differentiate it that way. Is I like to walk the perimeter and come up through some of the different paddocks. That's and we've really got nice. five or six arenas. So I might walk around one and walk inside another, kind of meandering my yeah. way into the arena that I want to work in, yeah. which might even be on the trail, right? Yeah. But I, I think of it as that's kind of the pre-warm up is kind of how I think of it. And now I hear the, the well, loosen up. Yeah, and that's really interesting. So one of the things really valuable about that is that I've read some very compelling studies and more research does need to be done in this area, but I've read some compelling studies that in addition to warming up the joint fluid and circulating the synovial fluid, you are like, Proprioceptors, and I talk about them a lot, but basically these are the little cells that tell, you know, the nervous system how things are working and the force to generate to, to create the next stride or the next okay. movement. Those proprioceptors are really concentrated around joints. I mean, they're throughout mm -hmm. the body, but particularly around joints. If they're not activated in the beginning of a session, they don't get switched on. They're like light switches. So it's the same reason like a human would do like form drills before they go run a 5K race, for example. Like they do these silly leg swings and these skipping motions is to activate the proprioceptors. And so what you just described is a way of doing that is to switch on these proprioceptors because regardless of how good your exercises are later in the session, if those proprioceptors aren't switched on, you don't have these lasting results as a result of, of the session. Gotcha. You know? So you have to start with that yeah. if you're planning to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. The simple, the simple boring stuff is so valuable. <laughs> right. 
Wow. So that actually is making me think about the time that we've been spending here in Portugal for the mm -hmm. last, you know, we had six days of riding where we would start with the leg yields and the shoulder ins and the half passes and the circles and the quarter lines and the diagonals all in walk mm -hmm. before we ever did anything else. So is that what you'd be counting in as part of the loosen up into the warm up or is there a differentiation cool. in there? No, it's really interesting right. because I've noticed that and, and I think what I observed from this week is because these are very high level horses, they could come out and pee off like immediately out of the stall. But what they would have us all do is mount it on the horse and they would like we'd all be walking around on a long rein mm -hmm. and then they would stop and check our girth and then they would ask you how do your stirrups feel and you would walk around some more and I timed it one day and it was a it was close to 10 minutes before they had us like pick up the reins and then and we then do a whole bunch more and something. walk and then we do a okay. whole bunch more but i was like i i believe it's conscious on their part maybe it's not but it's cool because i was like hmm, all right these horses are getting their walking and this is this is awesome yeah, yeah. so then uh, from that this has just got me thinking about different things would you and maybe this is going to something that i've read that you've written or watched that you've posted video wise do you put restrictions to yourself on frame on posture before you've done your loosen up does that question even make sense oh yeah that's interesting I, I feel like that's a little bit horse dependent but so here's the thing like I know many times in the dressage world anyway there's the idea that you want to I, I've, I've heard this and it's not scientifically sound, but you want to warm up the muscles that you're then going to use. So the idea okay. is you mm -hmm. don't want to let the horse poke around on a loose rein because we're going to ask him to be all collected. That is, that is not factual. Okay. But that is, that has been a, a belief in the dressage world. Maybe it's changing. Hopefully it's changing, but I don't put a restriction on, or I don't put any prescriptions on like the frame a horse needs to be in. That said, I will not put a horse in any kind of auxiliary aids right out the gate. That makes me just cry mm. inside. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I don't use side reins anyway. Well, because but. then you're limiting mobility by putting in a frame before that synovial fluid has had a chance to Mobil loosen up. Mobility is super important because the other thing that's involved there, as you know, with your anatomy studies is the fascia. Mm. So I've read a lot of interesting studies that the fascia determines up to 30 percent of the force that a muscle is able to generate because the nerves come through there so okay. if your proprioceptors are turned on and they're telling the muscles fire at this you know we're going to do an extended trot fire at this amount of power like if the fascia is in a crummy state it doesn't happen gotcha so and that all happens during your warm-up like all of that so that's one of the reasons i don't like to you know lock them down in the warm-up in terms mm -hmm. of their frame but i mean that said if you have a really squirrely horse or a horse you know off the track that needs a little bit more support there's exceptions to everything you know sure. but generally i'm on a loose rein in the walking phase or or in hand okay now i'm going to take that another step yeah. here um or maybe it's not another step i think it does actually filter into what you're saying here i feel like i just want to verbalize it if you've got a horse that has a tendency to be more of a llama Right, you guys can picture what I mean by being a llama, right? The back drops down, the neck lifts up, um, total inversion, yep. right? Yep. As part of your loosen up, I mean, I feel like anytime we allow posture like that, we're only allowing more damage to be done to the body, mm -hmm. totally, right? Totally. So part of your loosen up, you'd be saying without restricting, right? Without saying here's side reins, here's, you know, whatever other auxiliary whatever's, uh, saying, no, can we find this other place? Mm -hmm. That's still part of the loosen up. Totally, totally. Okay. Unless it stresses the horse out. But do you know what I mean? Like, unless they're getting anxious, like wound up about it. Gotcha. To where so, I think I would say, if that's the case, we need to be doing more in hand totally. work to help them find better yeah. posture in the first yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. So, 10 minutes of loosening up, mm -hmm. just getting the mobility in the joints, getting that uh, viscosity, right, mm -hmm. in the synovial fluid. Yep. Uh, then from there, what does a warm up look like? Oh, uh, first, how do you know you're ready for that? Is it just because your buzzer went off at 10 minutes? Well, I always like to tell people, you should feel like something changed. Like the horse is suddenly more forward or they feel like they have a longer step. Or more swing in the rib cage or... Yeah, or maybe you feel like you, if you gave a signal to trot, like it would happen immediately. You should feel like something changed. You shouldn't okay. feel like you're still sitting on exactly the same kind of horse if you're on them. What about breathing? Um, 
Breathing's huge. Like I'm I, really big in my, I, I still refer to it as part of my warm-ups, but I'm really big in like, I don't want to pick up connection until they've blown out totally, at the walk. Totally. Or at, and at the trot, and at the canter. Like I kind of want to let them do that so that we know that the diaphragm's working properly and not being restricted and, and whatever. I think, no, and absolutely, and to go down a, a short side road, I think a large part of this is the mental component. Because mm -hmm. I know, and again, this, there's a little bit of interweaving here with human athletes, but if you always work a horse or a human at the same intensity level day after day after day after day, there gets to be a mental pattern about oh, it. Oh, sure. You're, so you're anticipating that workout ahead and that might come with a certain level of like concentration or mild anxiety about whatever the workout is. And I feel like horses that come out of the stall and like, you know, you just like pick up your reins and you go to work, whatever the work is you never get that breathing out. And a lot of it's just because they are so gotcha. down the road with here's this and this and this. Yep, because of what I did yesterday. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. absolutely. So what was your question? Mm, cool. <laughs> um, so, well, so the question was, uh, how do we differentiate? How do we know that that 10 minutes is up? And I think you answered that yeah. really, really mm -hmm. well with, you feel like there was a change. You feel like yeah. you could ask for something and it would be there. Something should be different. So then what do we go into for the the warm-up now after the loosen up does that mean okay now here we go we're trotting out the box or is there more walk involved with that is there now frame changes what are you looking for in the warm-up so <clears throat> this is where it's important to know what your plan is for the day i'm a big one for having a plan so are you just going to do like a 30 minute kind of mellow ride for the day or is this a schooling session like what's the plan so mm -hmm. the general guidelines are the harder the workout you have planned the harder the work the warm-up needs to be Okay. The that easier, makes sense. and sometimes people do it the opposite. They're like, I got this big beefy workout plan. I'm going to go like light on my, oh. on my warm up. But those muscles need to be so primed. Sure. You need to really get after it in the warm up. You mm -hmm. need to be trot canter transitions. You need to be making speed changes in trot and canter. You need to get the blood into the muscle. If you just have like a mellow little, you know, 30 minute kind of shakeout ride, then maybe you're looking at five to eight minutes of some simple gate transitions, okay. basic arena patterns, and you're good to go. So those are the general rules. But what most people don't understand is the way you structure your ride is however long you're going to ride, this is why it's good to have a plan. Let's mm -hmm. say you're gonna ride for an hour. Your warm up should be 30% of your ride. Like okay. That mm -hmm. is scientifically sound. And I know very few people for whom that is actually true. Like. We're just all so vague because horses mm. are amazing athletes. They're amazing and mm -hmm. we can get away with it, you know, but like is your warm up and that includes the loosening up phase that we talked about. So the loosening up and the warming up that we're talking about, that should be 30% of your ride, which is a good chunk. And now we're just talking about the physical side of things, yeah. right? Because I'm, I'm thinking here as a question too is, so is the loosen up warm up going to look the same? And I know the answer is no. Um, but is the loosen up, or maybe it's yes, and I'm completely wrong. Is the loosen up warm up going to look the same for the Grand Prix horse as it is for the reigning horse as it is for the horse that I'm just starting under saddle? I feel like for some of those horses, like the horse I'm just starting under saddle or the horse that I'm fixing other challenges with, we're probably talking more about the emotional fitness even to start with mm -hmm. and then getting into the physical fitness yeah. side of things. I feel like we're already pushing the timeline yeah. that we said we were going to do yeah. for this because we're going to talk for the next seven hours about what, know, right? about the first 30 percent of our ride. Warming us is uh, fascinating. <laughs> I know. But that's what I love about <clears throat> chatting about this stuff. Um, I don't even know where I want to go with that question, I guess. But the, <clears throat> the, the, uh, the core of the question is the warm up is going to look different depending on the phase the horse is at in their development, mm -hmm. which I think goes into what you were saying. The more intense yeah. the ride is going to be, the more intense the warm up needs to be. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, and that would be across all levels and phases of, of the development, yep. right? And, and across all disciplines. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it is very, it, I think it's very discipline specific and age specific for the horse. Um, because obviously with a younger horse, you're going to work them a shorter period of time. So mm -hmm. hopefully you get the mental piece dialed. I mean, that, that's the biggest piece, you mm -hmm. know, is to get, make sure they're on board with that. And then make sure that your physical component is at least 30%. I mean, some days the warm-up's the whole session. 
Right. I mean, that's it. Yes. That's what you do. Then yes. you put them away. And exactly, because you get them mentally dialed in yeah. to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which will go more into just uh, more primarily the loosen up, right? To get the mental connection and then getting part of the warm up in there with it. Yep. As, as we're talking about on the, on the physical side of things, right? Getting the emotional side dialed in. Yep. And then going from there. So what would you, this is such a terrible question because it's so broad spectrum, but what would you prescribe as thoughts for a warm up? If we can generalize that. Yeah, I mean, to be very general, I think my, my guiding advice for people is don't always do the same thing because exercise okay. thrives on novelty. So you can have a okay. few routines that, you know, in your pocket that work, that, that you like, that the horse seems to respond to, but don't always do the same thing because what happens, horses are super adaptable to exercise. So mm. everything slides towards the middle. You're not making gains okay. anymore, right? So you're not, you don't have that same delivery of oxygen and blood flow to the muscles. So, you know, you can have like maybe three routines that you like and switch them up every few months. Um, that's my, my first advice. The other is, you know, the warm up's a great time to do something different than your normal uh, mm. session. So if you're a dressage rider, I mean, I don't think any dressage horse needs to drill dressage more than 30, 35 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. So that'd be their schooling session, but your loosening and warming up phase, it could happen somewhere else. Maybe you do some of it in the round pen, maybe you go around the field. Um, for your warm up, like really get them going in the field or track or down the road, and then come in and do your um, dressage schooling. So I just used dressage as an example, but you know that's a good time to sneak in some cross training in my world, right? That's awesome. Um, but as a bare minimum, I always and I feel like the rainers are really good at this. I feel like the jumpers are good at this. There's some disciplines I feel like are better. You gotta canter the horse, and I feel like too mm. often in dressage, this is another side mm -hmm. alley. I feel like sometimes we're waiting so long to get the trot balanced, and there's a time and place for that, but I mean, if it's seven years down the road and we're still getting through, and, and I've been through that myself, it's the only reason I use that as a joke, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm just going to get this trot balanced, and then I'm going to work on the canter, and it's mm -hmm. like, the canter is hugely, hugely beneficial, mm -hmm. physiologically, so... Sure, because the canter uses the body oh, different yeah. than the trot and the walk, do, yeah, right? So, so then the canter to both leads is going to give your trot... Mm. Uh, a more benefit and those right? transitions so yeah. i feel like every good warm-up needs to have um like i say for a more robust training session okay given the time of year that this is coming out i think many mm. people are in the heart of winter and as i said before like your warm-up session might be all you do like if you're in northern uh, sure. wisconsin and it's gotcha. freezing yep. you might only ride for 25 minutes at the walk right mm -hmm. so this might not apply to you but if you have a robot again have a plan. Mm -hmm. If you have a more robust um, session plan, then it's like a cantering, trot canter transitions, like so many, so good for the body. Mm -hmm. Some speed changes in the trot, some gait transitions, and some bending in both directions. Like that's just a real simple must do checklist that I go through. What do you do? That's super cool. What do I do? Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, well, funny you ask. Um, and <laughs> What do I do? Actually, um, so my work sessions at home for the horses are varied day to day. Um, and I, I totally try to follow your advice with that, with the mixing things up. So the horses that I have in, in a program at home, we have, uh, we have a trail day. Well, so generally speaking, if the weather is conducive, yeah, right, yeah. and we're in a place where we can trail ride for a bazillion miles, uh, but we have a, if I'm setting sessions, right, and my warm up is going to, to apply to the session that I'm doing, right? So we have a trail day, we have a jump day. It doesn't matter where the horse is headed as a discipline, mm -hmm. every horse has a jump day. Maybe that means cross awesome. rail, maybe it means just a ground pole, maybe it means an actual jump, but that's for wherever they are in their education. And maybe that means leading them across it on the ground, okay. or maybe that means riding them, but they all have at least one day a week there's a jump day. That's awesome. Now we've got a ton of poles. We actually host jumping shows at the barn, so we've got a ton of poles. Oh, okay. So following your advice, okay. at least three days a week they go over ground poles, awesome. whether it's walk, trot, or canter. Okay. Uh, they've got ground poles set up somewhere, which is always a pain when we have to drag, but yeah. we move them, we, you know, yeah. whatever, it's all good. So we have the trail day, we have a jump day, I have a circles and serpentines day. Huh. That that's basically all, it's not all we focus on, but it's the primary focus of the focus. Okay. Uh, we have a lateral day, where I focus mostly on lateral work, which is usually a shorter ride. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also have what I refer to as the long run day. And I call that, you inspired that one from the whole marathon running, where we might say, 
here's uh, here's a medium working frame mm -hmm. and now we're gonna go 10 laps at the walk we're gonna go 10 laps at the trot we're gonna go six laps at the canter okay. we're gonna okay. change to and it's like just kind of I joke it's the old Ronco rotisserie set it and forget it right like just here's the <laughs> yeah. here's the frame here's the tempo here's the thing like and it. that's always the shortest ride of the week okay. but so I have a variety of those and then of course we have our working equitation days on our special days and I like to play around with roping and maybe you know uh, playing a liberty day and things like that mm -hmm. but then our warm-ups are almost always weather dependent meandering around the property first right to that. find the loosen up which is where I talk to you about like I can't wait to have you out to say oh here's a here's a part of the property great for working stifles or yeah. here's a part yeah. of the property where we, we've got lots of videos planned you guys Jack doesn't even know how many videos we have planned yet uh, <laughs> but but so we we do a lot of that stuff and then the meandering in and out of the different arenas and different stuff like that but then uh, you know so let's say it's the jump day then we've got different poles that we'll walk over and I want them walking over until they feel really loose and until I feel like I can leg yield on to one and leg yield off of one and different things like that uh, so the war for me that warm-up is always dependent on like you said what the what, what the work is gonna be that day yeah you know? that's how it should be yeah that's how it should be. cool perfect so then final question for this and I probably we said we were gonna do like a five ten yeah. minute video and at this point I've got so many questions we're all missing flights tomorrow because we're just gonna continue this I'm not even going to Spain we're staying right here <laughs> on these couches like and filming like forever. 20 hours <laughs> warm up forever <laughs> right we're, I think that's a whole nother trap we can get stuck <laughs> in that we'll have to do a video on sometime too but uh, actually on that same line of warming up forever how do you know when your warm-ups done how do you know when you're actually ready to go into your working session this is where I mean that's a good question there are many of us that can do it by feel you can feel the horses muscles and vibrance and and responsiveness underneath you if you're kind of newer to this whole experience or you're still learning you don't know I cannot emphasize enough get yourself a heart rate monitor you'd be shocked what you learn oh, about really? your horse yeah yeah I mean the data you can get back from a heart rate monitor is really amazing so when you first put them into their working gates it's probably going to spike up pretty high when you first go into it just because of the biomechanics involved yeah yeah okay. and then you know it'll stay high and then it'll start to drop this is just one little if, like if you're kind of a nerd and this interests you check it out because it's fun a heart rate monitors are really cheap they're like 80 bucks and then when the heart rate starts to come down and you're still in your working trot and you're the, the horse is trotting really nicely and they're at like 110 115 beats a minute it is time to get to work like their body is fully on board ready to rock so that's just one fun way but there's many of us you know when you ride horses a ton you start to just like I say something should feel different mm -hmm. it's gonna last at least five to ten minutes you know that different, different feel that you're talking about no I mean the warm-up phase so you the do loosening phase. up okay. phase and then you get you, you start to really actively I feel like most people underride their warm-up they're uh, like oh we're mm -hmm. warming up and it's like well the way that you warm up is like you get after it so you're not dinking around you're, not, you're actually go, it's you're going to work you're not before you go to work cuts and around that doesn't mean okay. some days you, you don't dink around but but generally speaking if you have a robust training session plan you need to get after it in your in your warm-up and you should it's gonna be at least five to ten minutes okay again it's a good time to use a watch I mean most of us can do this intuitively but sometimes mm -hmm. just check yourself you know mm -hmm. But as you, I feel like, uh, as you go through the warm-ups and as you focus on the watch and as you think about the different exercises with your horse, you start to feel their individual changes. Yeah, totally. Right? As yeah. you, as you, uh, as and you the breathing hit out. That. To your point. And the breathing out. In my world, mm -hmm. if they haven't like, mm -hmm. I'm still waiting. There still you go. Waiting. Sometimes you might wait an hour. Yep. And that might be all you do. Yep. But you're not. There's no real work in my world till that happens. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. There's times where I'll stand at the mounting block until one blows out before I'll even climb on. <laughs> because they just haven't let go. Yeah. Right? They haven't they haven't released that. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, Jack, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much I for the chat about warming up. Thank you for joining <laughs> us here in Portugal. This has been amazing it and has, really can't has. wait for more 
uh, more videos, more adventures. Yeah. We're just going to keep coming back to Portugal to do these videos. Yeah, okay. Meet you next week here. Okay, we'll be here. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks, gang. <laughs> Cheers.